Welcome aboard, Trini. The subject of today's session will be communication with the Air Traffic Controller, ATC, and Ground Services. All messages and commands accessible through the communication menu are transmitted and received via the radio. As in real life, in the simulation is necessary to operate the radio on the common frequency in order to communicate. If this condition is not met, the message will not reach the recipient. On board the K-850 helicopter, the R-800 BHF radio is used for communication with other helicopters and ground personnel. The radio operates in the 100 to 149 MHz and the 200 to 400 MHz wavelength ranges. In the simulation, communication between the helicopters in the wing and to ATC on the airfields is always at a frequency of 127.5 MHz. All radio messages and commands are structured in the following manner. For example, this message is sent to the ATC with the call sign MICOP from the helicopter with the 251 call sign. The pilot of this helicopter is saying to ATC that he's five kilometers from the runway, has a runway in sight, has extended his landing gear, and is ready for landing. Prior to communicating, make sure the VHF-2 radio switches on the right panel are turned on. To access the radio command menu, press the slash key. The following menus will now appear. Wing, second wingman, third wingman, fourth wingman, ATC, and ground preparation. Submenu ATC allows communication with the air traffic controller. The ground preparation submenu allows communication with ground maintenance personnel. To exit the command menu, press the F12 or escape keys. Radio messages ATC include requests for startup, taxi, takeoff, and landing. To contact ATC with request, start by pressing the slash and then the F6 key. In order to communicate with ATC, the rotary switch on the radio control panel must be set to the VH2 position. The following subgroup commands are now accessible to the player. Startup request, taxi request, control hover request, takeoff request, return to base, landing request, and emergency request. Startup request. When you press F1, you're asking permission from the ATC to start the engines and ensure clearance around the helicopter. If the weather conditions permit, the ATC will give startup clearance. In bad weather, it's possible he won't. The maximum wind velocity and magnitude allowed for startup clearance is 20 meters per second for a nose wind and 10 meters per second for a tailwind or crosswind. Taxi clearance. The player requests taxi clearance from the ATC. If the weather conditions don't exceed the operational limits for taxi, the ATC will give taxi clearance. The maximum wind velocity and magnitude allowed for taxi clearance is 20 meters per second for the nose wind and 10 meters per second for a tail or crosswind. Control hover request. The player requests control hover clearance from the ATC. If the weather conditions don't exceed the operational limits for liftoff, the ATC will give clearance for a controlled hover. The maximum wind velocity and magnitude for a tailwind and crosswind when liftoff clearance is allowed is 10 meters per second. Takeoff clearance. The player requests takeoff clearance from the ATC. If there's no other traffic in the takeoff zone and the weather conditions are permissible, the ATC will give takeoff clearance. The maximum wind velocity and magnitude for a tailwind and crosswind when such clearance is allowed is 10 meters per second. 
return to base. The player requests information returning to the airfield from the ATC. The ATC gives course, range, the barometric pressure of the air at the runway and recommends pattern altitude. The pattern altitude is individually set for each airfield according to the scheme, but in general, a standard altitude of 300 meters is acceptable for a helicopter pattern. Landing clearance. During the approach, within five kilometers of the base, the player is allowed to request a landing clearance from ATC. If the runway is not occupied, the ATC gives clearance in landing heading, wind direction, and magnitude on the ground. If the runway or the helipad is occupied, the ATC denies landing and gives instructions to go around. After the runway is vacated, the ATC gives landing clearance without the need for additional requests. If the player has requested a landing clearance and is only one kilometer from the base, the ATC informs the player about any landing opportunities and wind parameters. Emergency. Emergency requests are sent to the automatic radio course and bearing transmitter at the airfield in case of the loss of navigational awareness in flight. Emergency requests are also emitted in case of the loss of orientation in flight after the failure of navigational equipment, complex weather conditions, or at night at a frequency of 127.5 megahertz. Upon request, player will be given an emergency straight course to the nearest airfield or helipad. It is necessary to follow the given course in order to reach the airfield. The group of commands related to ground preparation include a payload menu, refuel menu, selection of an external power source, helmet device selection, and connection of APU to the turbo gear. You can access the ground preparation commands by pressing slash and F10. Now the player has access to the following subgroup commands. Weapons payload, refueling, helmet mounted device, external ground power, turbo gear. There are two ways to communicate with the ground crew. First, communication via the intercom and audio unit. Second, voice communication with the cold helicopter. After ground communications is achieved, you can access the weapons payload submenu. The weapons payload group of commands includes several subgroups, each of which refers to a different payload. In this way, the payload can arm his COT-50 in reference to the goal of the mission. These include ferry flight, deep penetration strike, anti-tank, close air support, reduced, and according to task. Payloads are selected by pressing the following keys. Let's go ahead and select one of the payloads. The execution of the command is followed by report Five, from the ground zero, crew. One. Request rearming. Access the refuel submenu by pressing the following keys.
list of commands for refueling is now displayed. 25%, 50%, maximum combat weight, maximum ferry weight. The maximum combat takeoff weight is 10,800 kilograms to meet structural strength requirements. After receiving the command, refuel up to maximum combat weight, the ground crew estimates the quantity of fuel added considering the maximum combat weight of the helicopter, including external payloads. The maximum ferry weight is 11,900 kilograms to meet structural strength requirements. After receiving the command, refuel up to maximum ferry weight, the ground crew estimates the quantity of fuel added considering the maximum ferry weight of the helicopter, including external payload. You can refuel the helicopter up to 50% by pressing the following keys. Upon completion of the refueling, a ground crew report will follow. Copy. Refueling complete. Depending on the flight task and flight conditions, the player may give a command to the ground crew for replacement of the current helmet mounted device. The standard helmet device is the HMS, ensuring combat employment according to the given capabilities of the helicopter, but for low-level night flights, it is necessary to use night vision goggles. Call up the helmet mounted device replacement submenu by pressing the following keys. A list of commands is now available. Install HMTD, install NVG. You can now install the MVGs by pressing the following keys. Five, zero, one. Request MVG installation. Copy. MVG installed. Access the external electrical power connection submenu by pressing the following keys. The list of commands is then available. Connect or disconnect. During a cold start at the beginning of a mission, the external power is connected to the helicopter, so it's not necessary to give a command for external power. It is necessary to give a command for ground power connection when in the middle of a mission, you must land and shut down the engines. In this case, you must give a voice command for ground power with the cockpit door open. To perform control checks of various units and equipment without having to start the main engines, a turbo gear is used which operates with the APU bleed air. The turbo gear drives the AC generators and the hydraulic pumps. Access the turbo gear enable menu by pressing the following keys. A group of commands for operation of the turbo gear is then listed. Connect and disconnect. By default, the turbo gear is disconnected.
connect the turbo gear to the accessory gearbox and start it up, you must first give a command to the ground crew to connect the turbo gear to the accessory gearbox. You can do this by pressing the following keys. You can then start up the APU accordingly. about communicating with ATC and the ground crew is now over. You can now take control by pressing the escape key and change your weapons or fuel load yourself. Happy flying.